This video has been designed to give regional and community museums, their employees, volunteers, volunteer organizations, and the general public a simple step-by-step -step guide on how to care for and register Aboriginal objects and artifacts with Aboriginal Affairs Victoria or AAV. AAV maintains the Victorian Aboriginal Heritage Register, which records information about Aboriginal cultural heritage places and collections in Victoria. Many community museums are custodians of significant Victorian Aboriginal objects and artefacts and are staffed almost entirely by volunteers. It's therefore important to ensure these objects are catalogued and registered in a uniform way to give increased access to collections both to Aboriginal people and to the broader community. This will ensure that essential information is collected and also allow for a greater understanding of the significance of these objects and the stories that surround them. It's also important to re-establish the connection between Aboriginal people and these collections. And if you're in another boundary, say the Gunijmaran to Japarong boundary, or well, Japarong would use this to let them know that, well, we're in the vicinity, and if they wanted to cross, they would have to have a message stick to go with it. It is required by law to have these Aboriginal objects and artefacts registered with AAV under the Aboriginal Heritage Act 2006. A law with straightforward objectives. To recognise, protect and conserve Aboriginal cultural heritage objects in ways that are based on respect for Aboriginal knowledge and cultural practice. To recognise Aboriginal people as the primary knowledge holders of Aboriginal cultural heritage and to give traditional owners appropriate status in protecting those heritage objects. To best achieve these goals in relation to collections of Aboriginal objects and artefacts, it's important to form new collaborations and partnerships to increase opportunities for learning and growth, to manage collections and access the resources and skills to ensure collections are properly maintained, and to identify and present the important stories surrounding these significant objects and collections. It's important that Aboriginal people are the ones to tell these stories. The part a partnership between the, the community museum and, and traditional owners um, is really important because we can't work in isolation. If we want to tell a story, then everyone's got to contribute to it. So traditional owners can contribute to it. Um, the museum can contribute to it by sharing that information, being open about what's been held in museum collections. Um, we all bring other information, so it's just that we get a, uh, a better story. There's, 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 it's about start this story and, and how can we make it a really good story. And it's about bringing in people who have connection to it. Uh, the artefacts and its traditional line has that, have a very important connection to it. I mean, these artefacts tell tell of um, our ancestors and what they were doing at that time and how they were um, making things, and that's really important. It tells us about occupation. It tells us it's about connection. Um, a lot of these artefacts now are held in um, local museums, and it's about let's not keep them at the back of the museum. Let's put them at the front of the museum and tell this great great story. I think for too long things have been locked away from, from us as Aboriginal people, as traditional owners, um, and it's not about us wanting to take, take it all back, it's about us just wanting to know where it is and what it is, and being part of that process about protecting and preserving it, and I don't have to own it to do that. Well, um, Dunkeld Museum contacted us after they'd actually already been in, in touch with the Bunditjmara people um, for a bit of further advice about how to go about um, cataloguing and getting the collection they have here registered with us. Um, and uh, we also put them on to Tim Chatfield at uh, Martang, who's the Chaparong um, representative body, because um, they also have an interest in the, this, this area. Um, and between us, we set up a program. Um, we had staff coming down once a week. It was a rel relatively lengthy process, but we organised it so staff could come down once a week, um, identify the artefacts one by one, photograph them, catalogue, uh, document their characteristics and so on. 
um, and we had Gunditch Mara and, um, and Martang people involved in, in some of that process as well, which from my point of view, that's, that's one of the most important aspects of this whole process is to, is to ensure that the traditional owners uh, get engaged in the process and, and, and in fact probably drive it as far as possible. Our role at Aboriginal Affairs Victoria is more of an administrative one to, to keep a record of things, uh, to uh, uphold the legislation and to sort of facilitate the traditional owners being involved in the whole thing. So first step would be to ring Aboriginal Affairs Victoria. Uh, from there we could um, arrange someone from uh, the region to possibly come out and visit uh, the museum. Uh, from there, once we've established that um, it is an Aboriginal collection, uh, we can pretty much start the cataloguing and recording process of those items. Uh, once we've uh, completed that process, uh, we can pretty much uh, fill out the forms for the Victorian Aboriginal Heritage Register and we can submit the forms with the catalogue attached to that and from there that will be a um, recorded collection. It's not about taking the objects, it's not about um, taking control of the objects or the artefacts, it's about making sure that the information is available to as many people as it should be. The access to the information on, in the Victorian Aboriginal Heritage Registry is restricted to certain categories of people. So for instance, registered Aboriginal parties who generally represent traditional owners can access that information about their country. Um, the Victorian Aboriginal Heritage Council can access it. Um, state government employees in relation to land management can access that information. So for instance, um, Parks Victoria have a responsibility to manage a lot of Aboriginal cultural heritage places in their parks. They need to know that information, they need access to that database. Um, but it is restricted to those particular categories of people. Our organisation, the Gundich Mearing Corporation, operates as a RAP in the far southwest of Victoria. We cover an area along the coast to Tarandara, up to Hamilton, and around the Victoria Valley, and then up to Edenhope. What a RAP is, is a registered Aboriginal party that looks after cultural heritage in a particular area. The activities that we do as a RAP is to assist in the development of cultural heritage management plans. We send our community members out as site workers to inspect localities and places for cultural heritage objects and also the cultural heritage theme of a place. So we do that kind of work. Um, we work with heritage advisors who are appointed by um, land developers and government agencies who want to do developments over a particular area and what we do is assist that. If you or your family have an um, Aboriginal heritage object in, in your possession and you know you might have had it for a long time, it's important to care for it, especially if it's wood um, or if it's fibre, maybe it's a woven basket, it's important to care for it and there's a variety of ways you can care for it or get the advice to care for it. You can contact your registered Aboriginal party in your area you can contact your local museum, you can contact Museum Victoria or another place, the Koori Heritage Trust. They'll give you advice about how to care for uh, wooden heritage objects and also woven heritage objects. People might be uneasy about letting other people know or authorities know about the heritage objects that you have, but you need to let people know because without it we lose that heritage and we lose that knowledge. So it's important to let people know what you do have and how to care for it and that it's registered somewhere. Um, and it's important that you legally have it because that way you don't lose it. In Victoria we have very detailed legislation about the care and maintenance of Aboriginal heritage objects and you know the obligations that institutions or individuals or families have in caring for that. So you need to do your research, you need to get online, there's a, a vast amount of information online for you to, get, to investigate yourself about what you need and also the contacts for the professionals that you need to talk to about caring for the Aboriginal heritage object that you have in your possession. The process of identification, labelling, recording and cataloguing of all Aboriginal objects to Victorian state government and national standards for Australian museums and galleries is critical for all Australians. For the interpretation, access and education of all communities, both now and for the future.
I think um, Dunkirk Museum are very happy with the outcome um, that we've achieved. Um, the process isn't finished yet and there isn't necessarily a final point because there will be continued interaction between the museum and Gunditjmara and Chaparong people. Uh, so it, in a sense it's perhaps the beginning of a, another process as well. Um, but generally I think no, the Dunkirk Museum are quite happy with, with the way things have worked out and uh, with the registration process.